Hi there! Welcome back to Different Lands Similar Stories Read Aloud series. This is Lesson 8 and this story is actually from China and it is similar to Little Red Riding Hood which you previously heard. Now there are similarities but there are some things that are different as well. I want you to think about the wolf's actions in Little Red Riding Hood. And in this story, I want you to listen to find out which sorts of similar things will happen in this story, or do happen in this story. Now, there, the name of the story is Hugapo, I think. I'm not sure of the pronunciation. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. Um, there's no pronunciation guide for, for that particular word. Um, but there are for others, so just bear with me if that's not correct. Sorry. You can put, put the pronunciation in the comments below if you'd like to, to help me out. All right, let's go. A long time ago in rural southern China, there lived a mother and her two young daughters. Ashing was the eldest daughter and Li Hua was the youngest. Ashing, Li Hua, and their mother raised silkworms and sold their silk at the local market. One sunny fall morning, the girl's mother set off to the local market to sell the silk thread they had spun. However, on this particular occasion, she had decided to leave some silk thread behind so that she could make two new silk dresses for her daughters. Before the girl's mother left, she gave them strict instructions to stay inside the house. Do not go outside. The mother said to the girls, I have heard rumors that Hugapo, I think Hugapo, has come down into the foothills. She is a tiger that disguises herself as an old woman and tries to trick people. Please latch the door as soon as I leave. We will not go outside, promised Ashin. I will lock the door and we will spend our time cleaning the house. We will be right here waiting for you, promised Li Hua. And so the mother kissed her daughters and disappeared into the early morning mist that was rising up from the warm earth. Immediately the two girls set to work. They scrubbed the floor and dusted all the nooks and crannies of their small farm farmhouse. It was almost midday by the time they were finished. The sun was shining brightly and the birds were chirping loudly when the girls heard a knock on the door. Do not answer the door, said Ashing to her younger sister. I will find out who it is. Ashing stood in front of the locked door and asked, Who is there? Hello, my dear, said a voice that sounded as ancient as the hills. I have been walking for many miles. I wonder, could you spare a cup of water? Ashing was perplexed. She knew that she should not open the door. But somehow she felt that this old woman, for old wo woman it appeared to be, was in need of help. I cannot open the door, explained Ashing, but I can pass a cup of water through the open window. Thank you, my dear, replied this somewhat croaky voice. You are very kind. Ashing filled a cup of water from the bucket that contained drinking water from their well. Here you are she said as she passed the cup through the open window. The old woman now stood before the window. She took the cup in her old wrinkly hand and drank from it. When she was done, she handed the cup back to Ajing. How sweet your well water is, said the old woman. Thank you, said Ajing. As she spoke, Ajing looked more closely at the old woman. Just like her hands, her face was old and wrinkly. However, the woman had the most peculiar golden amber eyes that Ashing had ever seen. I don't suppose you have a little rice to spare, asked the old woman. As it happened, Li Hua had just cooked rice for lunch. Yes, we have some rice we can give you, shouted Li Hua as she eagerly placed some in a small porcelain bowl. Then she rushed to the window and handed the old woman the bowl and some chopsticks. The old woman looked at Li Hua and licked her lips. Why, thank you, my dear, said the old woman, all the while staring intently at Li Hua. 
I don't suppose you would let me sit for a minute or two while I eat this delicious rice? asked the old woman. Of course you can, exclaimed Li Hua, and before Ah Jin could stop her, Li Hua ran to the door, unlocked it, and opened it. In the blink of an eye, the old woman was in the house and sitting at the kitchen table. It was as if she had appeared by magic. Ah Jin began to feel alarmed. Are you here all alone? asked the old woman. Yes, replied Li Hua. Our mother has gone to sell the silk thread our silkworms produce. She told us to stay inside for safety, and that is what we have done, continued Li Hua proudly. I see, replied the old woman. You are very wise girls. There are all kinds of dangers in the outside world. Well, as soon as you have finished your rice, interrupted Ah Xing, I am sure you will want to be on your way. I am almost finished, replied the old woman, who, despite her words of praise, did not seem to like eating rice. There are only two more things that I need. Oh, what are they? asked Li Hua. Ah Xing guessed the answer just as the cunning old woman uttered the words. Two young girls! exclaimed the old woman. Once again, as if by magic, the old woman's movements were quick and sudden. She produced a sack, and before Ah Jing could stop her, she snatched Li Hua and placed her inside it. You are older, announced the old woman, and probably not very tasty. I am not sure that I want the trouble of carrying you into the mountains. As the old woman was speaking, Ah Xing reached for some of the spun silk thread that her mother had left behind. It had been spun and wound around the small branch of a mulberry bush. Ah Xing secretly placed it inside the pocket of her dress. Ah Xing had also decided that she would not let the old woman leave without her. I want to be with my sister, replied Ah Xing. Very well, said the old woman. Into the sack you go and in an instant Ah Xing found herself stuffed inside the sack beside her sister. It was clear to Ah Xing that the old woman had remarkable strength. She carried them with relative ease. After a while the old woman stopped and placed the sack containing the two girls on the ground. Moments later the sisters could hear someone or something noisily drinking water. As this was happening Ah Xing whispered to her sister to be quiet. Then she used the mulberry branch that held the silk thread to poke a hole in the sack. What she saw scared her half to death. Instead of an old woman, there was a tiger sitting on the edge of a large glistening lake. The old woman was really hug a po. Incredibly, instead of continuing onward, the tiger lay down in the afternoon sunshine and went to sleep. While the tiger slept, Ah Xing slowly pulled at the hole in the sack until it was wide enough for her to crawl through. She motioned to her sister to quietly follow her. The girls crept toward the sleeping tiger. Ah Xing reached for the silk thread inside her pocket. Then using the thread, the girls tied together the tiger's front and back legs. Just as they were finished, the tiger woke up and roared loudly. The tiger tried to free itself, but the yards of silk thread that had been wound around its legs held it fast. The girls ran like the wind back to their small farmhouse in the foothills. They hurried into their house and slammed the door and locked it. When their mother finally returned home, she hugged her daughters tightly. We told you that we would be here waiting for you, said Ah Jing and Li Hua together. All right. I hope you like this story. I'll see you back for the very last one from this series, Lesson 9. Bye!